It's been a week since the Starship's second integrated flight test, and there's a lot to discuss about the official post-flight report from SpaceX and Elon Musk. With a clean liftoff, including all 33 Raptor engines of the booster running without issue, followed by successful hot stage separation and second stage ignition, Starship stuck to the plan during the first few minutes of the flight. However, the explosion of Booster 9 after stage separation, and what exactly happened to Ship 25 at the end of its engine cutoff, were unclear until SpaceX released a statement on its website. According to SpaceX, following stage separation, the booster successfully completed its flip maneuver and initiated the boost backburn before it experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly. Although it's not stated on their website, the launch webcast makes it abundantly evident that the booster engines failed to restart for the boost backburn, resulting in the anomaly. The explosion occurred in the common dome area, where the flight termination system was installed. However, SpaceX did not mention whether the explosion was triggered by the flight termination system or not. On its website, SpaceX described the incident as a rapid unscheduled disassembly. The day after launch, SpaceX published a slow-motion video of hot staging, and here you can see three center engines of the ship gimbling right before they ignite for hot staging to direct their exhaust towards the vented interstage. The engines then re-centered for ascent into space. According to SpaceX, Ship 25 nearly completed its full duration burn and reached an altitude of 150 kilometers and a velocity of 24,000 kilometers per hour, becoming the first starship to reach outer space. The flight test's conclusion came when telemetry was lost near the end of the second stage burn. SpaceX confirmed that a command to destroy the vehicle was appropriately triggered based on available vehicle performance data. The reason for the telemetry loss is currently under investigation. Scott Ferguson of Astronomy Live captured the final moments of Ship 25 and posted it on X, and thanks to him, we now know a little more about what happened to the vehicle at the end of the flight. This video was captured right after the flight termination system was triggered and the upper stage exploded in suborbital space. The automated termination system installed outside the common dome area appears to have split the ship in two. What we are seeing here is the top portion of the ship spinning out of control and spewing clouds of gas in multiple directions. The upper half appears to be intact after the explosion, while the lower half might have been completely destroyed. I have posted the link to this exclusive video in the description. Now, let's take a look at the condition of stage zero, which includes the launch pad, launch tower, tank farm, and all the supporting structures. SpaceX teams, along with Elon Musk, inspected the launch site after the test flight and confirmed that the launch pad and the launch mount were in great shape. During the first test flight in April, the 33 Super Heavy engines blasted out a big crater beneath the launch mount, damaging the pad and throwing pieces of concrete and other debris high into the Texas sky. This time, the water deluge system protected the launch pad from the extreme conditions. There were no chunks of large debris around the pad after liftoff. According to SpaceX, no refurbishment is needed to the deluge system steel plate for the next launch. Similar to the test flight in April, the launch vehicle pitched away from the launch tower during liftoff. This could be intentional to quickly clear the launch mount and move the launch vehicle away from the tower to avoid damage to the structures in case of a launch failure during liftoff or ascent. This pitching maneuver caused the engine exhaust to point straight on one side of the launch mount ring, resulting in a small fire. The fire went out immediately, and it did not cause any major damage to the launch mount ring or the booster quick disconnect mechanism. The Starship Quick Disconnect Mechanism, which allows the flow of propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the upper stage, sustained damage during liftoff. The minor damages and misalignment could be fixed easily. SpaceX has activated the Quick Disconnect arm lately to verify its functionality. The damages don't seem to have a major impact on the arm's range of motion. There was no visible damage to the launch tower arms after the launch. SpaceX tested the arm's performance last Monday by raising, closing, and lowering it. It looks like the test went smoothly. The water storage tank at the tank farm incurred some damage, which might have resulted from the impact of debris. Similar damage occurred during the April launch, which was later repaired. Because both stages of the rocket were lost during the test flight, the Federal Aviation Administration declared a mishap had occurred and began an investigation. As it did after the April test flight, once the investigation is complete, SpaceX will create a list of corrective actions to fix the problems observed on the second flight. The FAA will approve the list and ensure SpaceX completes all of the actions before issuing a new launch license for the third Starship test flight. The biggest uncertainty at the moment is how long the mishap investigation will take. It's highly unlikely that the investigation and the ensuing licensing process will take so long because a lot went right on the second launch compared to the first.
On X, in a response to when SpaceX could be ready to launch again, Musk stated that Starship Flight 3 hardware should be ready to fly in three to four weeks. He added that SpaceX already has three ships in final production, meaning any one of those could be the next flight-ready Starship. As per current developments, it looks like Starship 28 and Super Heavy Booster 10 will be launched next. Booster 10, which has completed its cryogenic proof tests, is currently inside the Mega Bay, waiting for engine installation. Starship 28 was removed from its engine installation stand near the Rocket Garden on Wednesday night. The ship, which has already completed its cryo-proof tests, has been getting ready for the next round of pre-launch tests for the past few weeks. Teams have already installed all six engines into the ship. Ship 28 was moved into the high bay Thursday morning, where it will complete the remaining thermal protection system tiles and prepare for static fire testing. The second-generation Raptor engines that flew on the recent flight went through major upgrades and extensive ground testing to improve reliability, replacing the less reliable first-generation Raptors. SpaceX is developing a Raptor 3 engine variant to fly on future Starship missions. Musk recently revealed that the Raptor 3 will have more thrust, a higher specific impulse, and many other improvements compared to its predecessors. SpaceX currently employs heavy-duty shields to keep the other engines safe in the event that one of them explodes during testing or launch. According to Musk, Raptor 3s are robust enough not to require a heat shield. This will make engine installation easier and reduce the overall weight of the launch vehicle. SpaceX has already begun testing Raptor 3 engines at its McGregor test facility. During a test conducted in May, an engine achieved 2.64 meganewtons, or 269 tons of thrust, operating at a chamber pressure of 350 bar. For comparison, the first-generation Raptor engines produced around 1.81 meganewtons of thrust, and the current V2 engines generate around 2.3 meganewtons. With 33 Raptor V3 engines, future Super Heavy prototypes will produce a total thrust of 87.12 MN, or 8,883 tons, making the Starship the most powerful rocket in history. Super Heavy Booster 11 was rolled back to the build site lately, after completing its cryo-proof tests at Massey's. The booster was moved into the Mega Bay, and later placed atop the engine installation stand for the installation of Raptors. Engine installation will be quicker and simpler, thanks to the new installation stand inside the Mega Bay. Starship 29 was relocated from the Rocket Garden into the High Bay last Monday night. The ship has already completed three cryo-proof tests. That same night, Ship 31 made her way to the Rocket Garden from the High Bay. The ship is yet to begin its cryo-proof test campaign. The High Bay currently berths ships 28, 29, 30, and 32. Boosters 10, 11, 12, and partially stacked Booster 13 are currently housed inside the Mega Bay. Recently on X, Elon Musk shared a photo of starships inside the High Bay and stated that they are the last of the first-generation starships. This means that SpaceX is going to make changes to the starship design and will build the next iteration of the vehicle. Musk mentioned that version 2 of the ship would hold more propellant, reduce dry mass, and improve reliability, but he did not specify much about the features of future Starship variants. But based on his past tweets, we can make some educated guesses. Previously, Musk said that future Starships will feature three additional Raptor vacuum engines, and propellant tanks will be extended by at least 5 to 10 meters. The spacecraft is currently 50 meters tall and features six Raptors. The increase in the number of engines to nine and a greater propellant capacity will increase the Starship's total thrust and allow it to launch more payloads into orbit. Furthermore, upgrading from second-generation Raptors to third-generation will boost the Starship's thrust and payload capacity. The second-generation Starships will also feature upgrades based on lessons learned from recent integrated flight tests and pre-launch ground tests. New and stronger welds can be expected in future Starship variants. Super heavy boosters might also receive some of these design upgrades in the future. Currently, ships up to 34 are under production at Starbase. So, ships beyond 34 will probably be the ones that receive the upgrades. What design changes do you believe SpaceX will likely incorporate into future Starship vehicles? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. The European Space Agency's Ariane 6 heavy lift rocket is one step closer to its inaugural launch. On November 23, an Ariane 6 launch vehicle conducted a full-scale launch rehearsal at Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. The test culminated with the seven-minute long firing of its core stage single Vulcan 2.1 engine, which runs on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The engine is capable of producing a maximum thrust of 1,370 kN. 
The vehicle is also outfitted with either two or four solid rocket boosters, which increase its thrust at liftoff. For this rehearsal, the boosters were not ignited, so Ariane 6 stayed firmly on the launch pad. Thursday's test firing mimicked a full burn of the core stage on an actual launch. Mission controllers announced a shutdown at the expected time, although the performance of the engine appeared to change in the final minute of the burn. In a statement issued shortly thereafter, ESA stated that Ariane 6 passed the test, describing it as a seven-minute full firing of the engine, rather than the nearly eight minutes advertised beforehand. There will be one more hot fire before the Ariane 6 takes off. The launch team plans to conduct a test of the upper stage Vinci engine next month at a facility in Germany. The engine, which runs on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, generates a maximum thrust of 180 kilonewtons. ESA is currently planning to launch Ariane 6 sometime next year. The 63-meter tall rocket is capable of lifting 21,650 kilograms into low Earth orbit and 5,000 kilograms into geostationary orbit. Once operational, Ariane 6 will replace the workhorse Ariane 5, which retired this past July after 27 years of service and more than 100 successful launches. The United Launch Alliance hit another milestone in getting its first Vulcan rocket ready to launch. On November 19, inside the company's vertical integration facility at Cape Canaveral, ULA technicians stacked the Centaur 5 upper stage for the inaugural Vulcan rocket on top of the rocket's first stage. This is the last piece of the rocket other than the payload and fairings that need to be assembled before launch. The new Centaur stage was rebuilt after a test article failed during a static fire in March due to a structural fault. During the static fire conducted at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, hydrogen leaked from the upper stage, accumulated inside the test stand, and ignited, damaging the prototype. In June, ULA announced that it had concluded its investigation of the incident and decided to make minor reinforcements at the top of the forward dome of the upper stage to fix the issues. ULA then removed the Centaur stage that had been installed on the Vulcan booster at Cape Canaveral for the inaugural launch and shipped it back to the company's Alabama factory for modifications. Now that a modified Centaur has been installed, the assembled rocket will undergo combined testing of subsystems and components over the next few weeks. Then, the launch vehicle will roll to Space Launch Complex 41 to undergo a wet dress rehearsal to practice the countdown to launch. Before the March anomaly, ULA had been targeting early May for the launch. Now, the company is targeting December 24 for the first certification flight of the Vulcan rocket. The debut mission will launch the Peregrine lunar lander built by Astrobotic, which will attempt to deliver a batch of NASA experiments and technology demonstration payloads to the lunar surface. The Vulcan Centaur rocket, which ULA began developing in 2014, is the company's next-generation replacement for both the Atlas V and the Delta IV heavy rockets it has been flying for years. The two-stage heavy lift launch vehicle will lift up to 27,200 kg into low Earth orbit and 7,000 kg into geostationary orbit. The first stage of Vulcan is powered by two Blue Origin BE-4 engines that run on liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellants. The stage produces a maximum thrust of 4,900 kilonewtons. Up to six solid rocket boosters can be attached to the first stage in pairs, providing additional thrust during the first few minutes of the flight. Vulcan's upper stage, Centaur 5, is powered by two hydrogen-fueled RL-10 engines, producing 212 kilonewtons of thrust. NASA and the U.S. Space Force will be Vulcan's biggest customers. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.